Hi and welcome to Certified Beverage Professional. We appreciate your interest in the subject and the certification from the Global Food Service Institute at the State University of New York at Morrisville, SUNY Morrisville. The training will be presented by myself, Ed Manley, with E.H. Manley & Associates, in cooperation with Pearson Learning Solutions, which is the world's largest developer of uh, workforce development products. and. Uh, the, the, uh, we put the program together based on some people in the military who work for the admirals and generals who work in their homes and need uh, their basic needs are wine and food pairings more than anything. So that's the thrust of the program and the test is about half uh, questions on wine and food pairings and the uh, training also is uh, heavily geared towards that and the expectation from this uh, you taking this program is that you'll beef up your resume with something that looks good and that you'll be this one of the spiffier people at your workplace uh, in on the subject of uh, wines and spirits and so you'll you'll um, do better for yourself and you'll do better for your employer and um, that's it so we hope you learn a lot we hope you enjoy it and your feedback will be uh, appreciated and this lovely pin will be available at some point uh, we some of the pins for the certifications we did get the ones that we expected to be the most popular and some of them were waiting for enough people 50 60 people to take it and then we'll order because you can't order 10 you gotta order them by like the hundred to get a reasonable price so we'll have them and we'll sell them for probably six bucks or so which will cover our cost and uh, cost of mailing at least most of the cost uh, so you can get that we'll let you know when those are available So this is a uh, book and a slideshow that's full of words, full of information, lots of great stuff. You're not going to remember it. Don't expect you to. Don't even expect you to read it all. I'm going to point you in the direction of what to read, uh, what to read for casual reading. I, I mostly want you to remember what's in that book so that you can refer to it later on. When a party comes up, you can go back and say, OK, we're having fish. What should I serve with fish? But you need some information to pass the test. So how do you how do you know that? Well, if you see the girl down in the bottom right, that means I want you to write just like she's writing. That's just a reminder on this slide. There's probably a test question. When I say test question, that's probably a test question. Now there's a hundred questions in the data bank. The computer picks 80 for you, randomizes them, so you may or may not see it, but th it's a potential test question. Also, if it's bold and red, I did that because it's probably a test question. When I ask you a question, and then I'll pause and give you a chance at home to think about it, so think about it. See if you can come up with that. That'll help you to remember. If instead you're doing this while I say test question or while it's bold and red up there and you're daydreaming or watching the ball game out of the corner of your eye, then you're going to miss that question. The certified Beverage Professional Test is 80 questions, 40 of which are on wine and food pairings, which is mostly what you'll need to know in your work and your personal life, as I said before. My goal in life is to teach people things they actually need to know, not a bunch of obscure crap, which is why I did terrible in high school, because I didn't think I needed to know all that stuff. And all these years later, I was right. I did not need to know all that stuff. So I'm a big believer in teaching things you actually need to know and certainly testing things you actually need to know. I'll try to highlight the areas that are testable, tell you when slides are just for your general education about wine, how it's grown, where it comes from, so if it's general knowledge, relax and enjoy. And if it's for the test, write it down, write it down, write it down, write it down, write it down. In the beginning, there was beer. We're going to start with beer and spirits first so we get them out of the way. And more importantly, get the math out of the way while you're fresh. Most of the course is going to deal with uh, wine. So we're going to do this part first and uh, get it in some semblance of order. Another beer first reason is that pretty much all historians believe beer was brewed before wine was fermented. The most popular alcoholic beverage served with dinner is, guess what, beer. Now this is your first application of my very first lesson, which was what? If it's red and bold and you see the girl writing down at the bottom, you do what? You write. Why? Because it 
this might be a test question. Now there's uh, 100 test questions out of which 80 get picked by the computer, so you might not see some of these, but uh, they're in the 100. So you see the girl down the bottom writing? Uh, that means you should be writing, so you, you won't remember all this stuff. There's a lot of material, so make sure for the stuff that uh, looks like it's testable, make sure you wrote that down. Ales and lagers, what's the difference? Ale is a top fermenting yeast, which is brewed at 55 to 75 degrees. I Google this, and a wine I mean a beer sommelier says that aromatic beers that are brewed with more ingredients, like pale ales, should be served around 40 to 42, while beers with big flavors, such as the Belgian ales, don't release their aromas until they hit about 50. So those uh, might be served warmer. The basically saying the American beers. They don't have much uh, aroma anyway, so it doesn't much matter. Lager is a bottom fermenting yeast. Brewed at 32 to 55 degrees, it would be smoother than an ale. And lagers are best served cold at 38 to 45 degrees. All brewed beverages use grains or honey as the sugar in their fermentation process, which produces alcohol content that varies from almost nothing to 15% alcohol. Both are made using the same process. The color, flavor, and alcohol content and aroma can all be the same or similar regardless of whether the beer is an ale or a lager. Light beer, not surprisingly, has a lighter taste and is lower in calories than regular beer. But not that much lower. 12 ounce beer usually contains between 135 to 170 calories and light beer has uh, less than a hundred, so it's not like you can drink a dozen light beers and, and you don't gain any calories. That would not be true. Light beer can be made by adding enzymes that lower the calories and alcohol content of the beer, or by diluting regular beer that was fermented dry. Ancient people brewed this flavorful beverage with malted barley and hops. Today we use much the same ingredients to make beer, but with a production technology that's miles ahead. Beer has been drunk since 4000 BC in Mesopotamia. The Sikaru made it as a sacred beverage from grains but without hops. The Gauls and the Celts drank a beverage made with barley, wheat, and rye. During the Crusades, Europeans discovered spices and flavored the beverage with cinnamon and laurel. In the 15th century, Nordic peoples used hops as a spice, giving rise to the beer that we know today. Beer is a fermented beverage made with cereals and water. The barley used in making beer comes from the western provinces, with the malting being done elsewhere. The company has its own water filtration plant. It will be refiltered before being used to eliminate chlorine. This materials tank can hold 80,000 liters of water. Between 10 and 15 tons of malt and another grain are added. They use dark malt, which has been heat treated to a high temperature. The preparation will spend two hours here. An agitator prevents malt husks from settling to the bottom of the tank. Turbulence from the pumps during the transfer causes the formation of this protein foam. The wort is in the process of being extracted and will be boiled. About five hours have passed since the brewing process began. Here they draw off a sample since they'll make other control tests at various stages of brewing. This is the draft, a solid residue extracted from the wort. It will later be used as cattle feed. 
Here's a close-up view of the draft. Then the liquid is filtered. Here's the filtration tank where the wort is separated from the malt husks. A sample is withdrawn from the wort heater to verify the density of sugars and the quality of the wort. Now another ingredient, the hops, is added into the wort heater. The hops impart the bitterness and aroma particular to beer. The hops looks like this. Now they can start the brewing. In the control room, an operator handles the data control system of the brewing process. They add in the yeast, which starts off the fermentation, a process that lasts between seven and 10 days. This foam indicates that fermentation has begun and sugars will now transform into alcohol. Each fermentation tank is computer controlled to maintain a specific temperature. During fermentation, chemical reactions create the scum that we see. Now aged for three weeks, the beer is almost finished. We see here the bottling tanks. The beer has to be filtered once more. Exiting these filters, the wort is clarified, then rid of the components responsible for the cloudiness of the beer. Here's the beer filtered a second time, and finally finished as a clear product. Used bottles are now washed. After their wash cycle, the bottles have become sterilized. Empty bottles arrive on this plate, ready to be filled. About 1,000 bottles a minute are filled while on the move. Then they pass to the capper before being sent to the pasteurizer for pasteurization. Two steps remain. Labels are glued onto the bottles, then they're sent by the conveyor to be put into cases. Made from water and cereal grains, the beer is now ready to be consumed and enjoyed. They say a picture's worth a thousand words. I hope what you saw today speaks for itself. Our goal is to give you a view of the many manufacturing methods that produce the items we see in our daily lives. I'm Mark Tewksbury. See you next time on How It's Made.